So many things distract us from our pile. Weddings, work, and oh, hide your wallets. The Steam Summer Sale is here. Totally Drunk is here to talk Overwatch. Pete finishes a game. Reviews of IAVT Colorful and Transistor. All this and more coming up on Episode 8 of... The Pile of Shame. Gamers of all kinds, we know the struggle, that overwhelming pile of games to still beat. Conquer the pile, don't quit. Today's June 23rd, 2016. My name is Rob, and I'm your host for the support group. I go by Chai T out there in the gamer world, and with me tonight to help encourage you to keep up the fight against that growing pile are my co-hosts. Going first to our regular co-host, Pete, returning triumphantly for the first time in a while. How are you doing, sir? Doing okay. I finally, I finally beat a game. I'm coming back yes. strong. I'm, I'm excited. I beat it about 20 minutes ago. It was very last minute. Squeezing <laughs> in just before the show. Good for exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> and that voice there is from the Heroes Never Die podcast. Guest hosting tonight with us. Totemly drunk. How you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing good. It, it's been just a crazy week for me between three podcasts, an Overwatch tournament this weekend, and work, and you know, life in general. But I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty busy for us as well. So let's uh, figure out what's uh, what's going on in creating the pile. Zug zug, work complete. Well, first of all, let's talk about how big your pile is before we talk about what distracts us from it. So. Guess first. How big how big is your pile of video games that you need to get to still? Okay, so I went through my Steam profile earlier and you know, I, I held off a lot on the prior sales, so I don't have that big of a PC pile. Fortunately for me. Uh, it's only like twenty five, which is nothing. Most of mine is going to be between my PS4 games, which I have like forty of, mm-hmm. which is a lot yeah and yeah, i've got like four of, a lot of 3ds games that <laughs> i i've purchased or just acquired over the years that i just haven't gotten to so there's probably at least another 40 there so i'm looking at probably around 110 right now not including anything uh for my retro systems that i do own so that okay. number will be even higher uh the next time i'm on so. <laughs> what's your uh what's your shame quotient then like how many have you beat compared to how much you have Okay, so out of the games that I have, well, here's the thing. I don't play as many single-player games, so I play a lot of multiplayer games. But I would say if I had to put a percentage on it, I'm not going to go with what I wrote down. <laughs> just think <laughs> that. <laughs> I, I'd say I'm probably close to about 75% left on the pile, so it's still going to be a ways. Wow. That's, uh, That's I wish bad, I was though. there. Oh, 75 <laughs> seems so far away. <laughs> it does sound pretty good to me right about now. Yeah, right. but it's all it's all because of just the amount of games that I have compared to you guys. Right. You guys are a lot higher than I am, so Yeah, it's, you it's just have like much better for still for street and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Every podcast I seem to be going down about one to two percent, which is great. That's exactly why we do this thing. <laughs> is try to get that pile down. So right oh. now I'm sitting about eighty two point three percent. So I'm I was at 84 last podcast, so I'm getting there, getting there. Pete, how about you? I remember down. (laughs) I I went that direction once on that percentage, I think. (laughs) Uh, I haven't run the numbers yet. I was at 89.5% when I was last here. Um, And then I looked at how many games I bought and realized there are some that are completely unaccounted for that I forgot about. So I'm pretty sure I'm at 90 point something again. Oh, man. Um, yeah, it's bad news. I'm going the wrong way, man. Your <laughs> podcast isn't working. <laughs> oh, just think what it would be. It would be like 99 if we if it weren't for this. This is true. Somehow I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have beat a game 20 minutes ago. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, you would not have. All right, well, let's figure out what's keeping us from moving that pile. Ah, cart is not moving! So, Pete, what, what's been keeping you from playing games except for the last 20 minutes? Yeah, well, just a few things. Uh, one of them is common with you. The mm-hmm. Wedding. We were out in Hawaii there for a, for a week getting mm-hmm. a gigantic sunburn. That was yes. a fun time, right? Yes. <laughs> it's a gift that keeps giving. It, uh, it really does. I still 
Yeah, this, the physiological effects are fun. <laughs> peeling, the peeling. <laughs> um, aside from that, I'm also in the process of finally selling my condo, oh, which thank I've God. complained about numerous times. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it, it actually goes on the market like today, so Sweet. I'm pretty excited about that. If anyone um, wants a condo in the in the Seattle area, reach out to Pete. <laughs> That's right. Please, please buy my condo. Um, aside from that, you know, there's just the regular work stuff, and uh, I also ran a marathon this past weekend. What? So uh, nice. <laughs> that was. I guess I shouldn't say ran. I should say completed. <laughs> it took Hobble, me like you hobbled a marathon. And, yeah, it was the. I saw. It was called the Rock and Roll Marathon. And the best hashtag I saw for it was walk and roll, because that was that was definitely what the last six miles were. It was like I can't move anymore; everything's seizing up. So you just have like a spotter behind you that was just like rolling you down the road. <laughs> that would have been pretty awesome, but uh, yeah, Evan should have came no. back and started just like pushing you as you slowed down. No kidding, right? Oh my gosh, no! My only motivation came from like. If you passed someone earlier, I'm like, I can't let him go past me again. Everybody's <laughs> shuffling at this point. I just got to <laughs> shuffle fast enough. Oh, man. All right. Well, Totem, with your uh, 75% of your pile left, what, what's actually <laughs> keeping you from playing? Ah, uh, man. Well, obviously, the big thing for me is Overwatch. You know, I host an Overwatch podcast. I'm also hosting a tournament this weekend, which I'm doing a lot of work for behind the scenes. And other than that, you know, I'm watching a lot of esports for Overwatch. And, you know, Orange is the New Black Season 4 just came out. So I've been trying to catch as much of that as I can in between uh, streaming and all that. But yeah, other than that, there's just been a lot of movies out lately. I am a total movie snob and I go multiple times a week. And it's the summertime, so there is at least two movies out every week that I want to see. So right. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the last one you saw then? Oh, man. Well, let... I didn't go last week just because I had other commitments. But, you know, mm. Finding Dory came out, which I haven't seen yet. Uh, I am planning on going with my, my niece and nephews and going to take them because I know they're really antsy to see it. But, you know, this week we got we got The Shallows coming out with Blake Lively, which is, you know, a shark movie. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Well, <laughs> funny got... story about that one. Um I I was in Hawaii when we went to go see Warcraft and they had that uh, trailer <laughs> in front of it. And I just before, like three hours before, I was in the Bishop Museum in Honolulu, which has some like science and interactive exhibits. And they had a one of the visiting exhibits was about sharks. And they had a whole <laughs> thing about Jaws and the the creator of jaws saying like if i knew what i know now about sharks i would not have made this movie with a good conscience and so i go in and see that trailer i'm like (sighs) (laughs) if he hadn't made it someone else would right now they are (laughs) yep now they are (laughs) yeah other than that uh we have independence day 2 which probably no one is asking for 20 years later right right (laughs) it's got jeff goldblum though come on that's uh, getting panned by critics. Big shocker there. Um, we got mm. the Neon Demon, which is another independent uh, thriller. Uh, it's by the guy that directed Drive. It looks very oh. colorful. Um, I'm probably going to end up seeing that. And The Shallows to make it a double scary movie day. So <laughs> that's my plan for tomorrow. Nice. Fun. Sounds good. Fun times. All right. Uh, so for me, yeah, spent time in hawaii with pete and uh and went on vacation and got a sunburn and <laughs> walked a lot ate a lot of gelato That's true. it was good oh man it was so hot there but then i came home to nebraska and it's like nope going back do not want <laughs> was it even it was worse in nebraska it's like 99 <laughs> degrees with about as much humidity so that's messed up yeah it's terrible it's no <laughs> bueno don't do not recommend do not come to nebraska <laughs> oh, great. won't vacation there right yeah don't vacation in the summer but you can come for the cicadas it's always great uh <laughs> so speaking of cicadas i had my uh one year wedding anniversaries um two days ago thank you nice, congrats so that was uh the reason i mentioned cicadas is at our wedding 
lots and lots of cicadas <laughs> as pete can attest to it was great oh yeah uh let's see overwatch taking our souls always um I'm participating in Totem Lee's tournament, so I've been practicing with my with my team, trying to trying to get everything gelled together. So I, I feel like we've got a good shot at it. So uh, keeping keeping to play in that, uh, and then went back to school. Uh, so I'm in the middle of writing a term paper right now, which I haven't done in many many years. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, God. <laughs> That does not sound particularly no. appealing. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take a hard pass on that. Right. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I mentioned Orange is a New Black. I, I'm not in that series. We're trying to catch up with the with all the Marvel stuff. So we finished um, Daredevil season one, and we're about mo- we're most of the way through Jessica Jones. So trying to get caught nice. up there. So it's a it's a pretty good series. We watched like half of the season on the airplane rides to and from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> there you go that's a good way to spend those uh yeah how many hours was that god um were you like 12 or was yeah it, more? it was like it was about 12 12 hours total <laughs> flight time each time it was not not good not fun uh, <laughs> but i did manage to squeeze in some game time and actually finish a game that's taken me about two years to complete so let's figure out what <laughs> nice. that is another game all right Uh, (laughs) so transistor that game recently celebrated its two-year anniversary and it took me about that long to complete i didn't realize it was two years old man yeah yeah it came out shortly after i bought the ps4 and that was like one game that i pre-ordered i was like i'm gonna be so into this because uh super giant games and they're the ones who made bastion a few years ago and bastion was a fantastic game the narration the gameplay everything was great so i was really looking forward to this this transistor has a um like technology theme to it and i'm a bit of a tech geek so i was like all right awesome let's do this (laughs) so but it still took me two years to complete it and so this weekend i just buckled down dumped a couple hours into it finished it off so, and the reason why it took me two years, I feel, is because it was only in these last two hours that I really had any coherency in the story. Like, hmm. um, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it purposefully does that because it sets you up with the general t- trope of, guess what? You have amnesia or you don't know what's going on. Uh, and so you have to kind of piece a story together as you play through. And... So you start the game as a young redheaded woman and then you pull the sword out of a man's torso. And that's how you start the game. And you're like, what the hell happened? Uh, (laughs) That's how every game should start. (laughs) And the sword is like a large chip of sorts. And then it starts to talk to you, but you can't talk back. And so it's doing kind of narration similar to what Bastion did. Um, Hmm. You find out that your character used to be a renowned opera singer, but then lost her voice in whatever this... uh, event that happened was and so you have to kind of piece together the you know all of the the mysteries and and figure out what's going on you keep getting attacked by these like technology type opponents like these um bits and and bites that keep jumping out of the uh, of the ground to attack you so you're trying to figure it out now the gameplay itself is pretty interesting it allows you to take turns a turn function and which pauses combat and then you actually set up your attacks and you rapidly do these planned attacks after you, you like you set everything up and you can delete and everything like that you just set up perfectly and you hit go and it just goes and executes those attacks but then you have to wait a few seconds in real time for it to come back to reset so then you're actually moving around everything's moving in real time um, later on in the game, you're able to make some of your attacks hit in real time too, while you're waiting for turn to, uh, come hmm. back up. So that's interesting. Yeah. And as you level up, you gain access to new combat methods as well. And these methods can either be a primary attack or a modifier to a primary or a passive, and you can combine them together. You make really interesting combinations. For example, one of the first ones you get is crash. 
And as a primary, it's just a basic attack. You, you attach it to your X button on your PlayStation controller, and you just do a basic attack um, just to a single enemy. And then another one is Purge, which you can uh, apply a damage over time. So you can either put Purge on like your O button and have a Crash and a Purge button both, or you can attach Purge to Crash, and then Crash will do a single target attack and then do a damage over time. Or you can then take that and make it a passive ability. So Purge would do a counterattack when hit. So you have all of these different abilities over time as you start leveling up. And you can make combinations and passives and make really interesting, weird combos. And so that was cool, but ended up being just frustrating and confusing. Oh, no. Because it's, like, it's like the materia, it sounds like. Right, that's it is it kind of like of. materia. Yeah, so it's yeah. basically like a lot of like modifying. Yes, a lot of modifiers going in there. But what makes it suck is that when you take damage and your health drops to zero instead of like, oh, you died, go back and continue, you lose access to one of your four primary attacks. It like what? kills it. And eventually if you run out of all four of your primary attacks, then you're knocked out and have to start over again. But that particular function will get lost for a time. They have a number of save points throughout the game, and usually when you lose access to a function, you have to go through one or two or three save points to reactivate it. But during that time, you wow. then have to come up with another combination to put in its slot, and so then you're getting these really weird combinations going, and then it's, yeah, it gets just frustrating and annoying and confusing. So that's, I wish that would have been a little bit better. It's cool on the on the front of it when you look at it you're like oh that looks really cool i can come up with all these combinations but then you just look at the combos you're like i don't get it i'm confused so so do you get can you get duplicates of those i mean or is no. it just you have one crash you have one purge you have you one have crash one, one purge yeah and you end up having about 20 or so different com um abilities by the end of the game mm -hmm. that hmm. you can and put together in different ways so it's not it's not terrible. Uh, at the end, I had a lot of options, and it's uh, when you level up, you get to choose between like they'll give you three abilities that you can then look through and choose one, and hmm. they give you: do you want a passive slot or do you want to add a combination slot? And so you can kind of, as you go, progress the way you want to. But hmm. so the theme That's is interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting, but in practice. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> I'm um, sorry to hear that. <laughs> so I think this is why it took me so long to get this game completed. The story not grabbing me, not engaging. The um, gameplay can be confusing and, and frustrating. Um, the theme is totally up my alley, though. I'm a big fan of Bastion. They did a great job with the, uh, with the narration again. Uh, mm. So when I bought this game and it came out, but the fact that it didn't, hold me enough to complete it quickly this makes me give it a three out of five um gameplay is fun gameplay is challenging but ultimately all the functions just create confusion and it's time consuming looking through all of them to find the good great combinations so you either go to a wiki or you just sit there looking and saying okay which one which one would be the best one when you could be going through and actually beating the game so three out of five for for this i still recommend playing it picking it up especially if you can get it on sale uh, mm. and I think they just had a really good sale on it because it was the two year anniversary. Uh, keep, keep an eye out for it. Hopefully it'll be one you can pick up. All right, Pete. That was, oh, I got to ask, how was the music? Cause I love the yes. music in Bastion. The music was excellent. Um, had a kind okay. of techno type theme to it. Uh, anytime the combat kicked on, the combat music was fantastic. So super giant knocked it out of the park again with the music. Always a, always a good one for them. Excellent. All right. All right, Pete, so, you beat a game. Yeah? yeah, so I beat a game 20 minutes ago. What? Um, <laughs> so I, I played through, uh, this is sort of a gimme. I feel sort of guilty even taking this one, but uh, I played through, it's called IAVT Colorful. And uh, it's basically, it's a rhythm game. Most people have heard of Hatsune Miku, the, you mm -hmm. know, the holographic idol that everybody in Japan loves and everybody else in the world is confused about. Um, <laughs> but... IAVT uh, stars Project IA, which is apparently uh, so 
Hatsune Miku is like a Vocaloid, which is just a program for singing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Project IA was one of the earlier ones, apparently, sort of an opera singer thing. And that's that's sort of the star voice of the game. Um, and then basically it's a whole whole bunch of different songs that I think were made by the community. I'm not entirely certain about that, but um, it's a, uh, yeah. So it's for the PS Vita as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, you wind up tapping the, the face buttons, like up, down, left, right, X, square, triangle, circle. Um, if you've ever played any of the Project Diva games, it's pretty similar to that. Those are the Hatsune Miku games. But, um, yeah, so I guess during... You play through these songs. There's, I think there's 60 of them when I looked. Um, and kind of in the normal section, there's these squiggly lines that come from the outside of the screen, and they all move around. And uh, You know, the different face buttons kind of fly in along those lines, and you tap them to a rhythm, and you make completely unnecessary noises like tambourines <laughs> or... Uh, once I beat the game, I unlocked some that are incredibly awesome, like a cat meow. So oh. Let me tell you, there's <laughs> yeah. there's nothing quite like playing through a song and having it completely ruined by hearing this constant meow, 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 meow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, those you get to hear those wonderful noises, tambourines, breaking glass, <laughs> whatever, when the, when the buttons get tapped. Um, and then in addition to those face buttons, there are some kind of wild card notes that show up. And that's where the colorful part of the name comes from. Okay. Um, so those show up and fill up this colorful meter that you have. And uh, the way the songs are broken up, there's there's like a normal segment. And then if you filled your colorful meter enough during that segment, it takes you to this sort of interlude where it, I don't know, like zooms in on the circle at the center of the screen and all the all the face buttons fly out from the center instead of the outside, making for a complete gameplay twist. <laughs> yeah, not at all different, but it, it just kind of changes it up. And if, you're, uh, if your colorful meter isn't high enough, you just don't even play that section. So it's kind of oh. like, oh, you better be good enough to not fail. Oh, as you get <laughs> a shorter, you miss, shorter <laughs> Yeah, you miss a big chunk of the song. Um, so that was, I mean, that's the gameplay is, uh, the, is the music any good like is it good songs so i i'm sort of on the fence about that I, <laughs> when i started playing it probably for the first half of it i was like hey this is cool it's got a good variety of music um you know it has rock it has some pop it even has some weird like rapish things <laughs> yeah nothing like listening to a J-rap. robot or rap yeah um so there's, there's some good variety, but towards the end of it, I was I was sort of getting tired of hearing the same Robo Girl singing all of my songs. <laughs> uh, I, I think I appreciate other games where they have a variety of musicians and stuff right. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it probably also depends on whether or not you had a dog barking or a cat meowing throughout the music too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's this is one of my sort of pet peeves with rhythm <laughs> games is when it. And like the Project Diva games do this too. When you press the face buttons or whatever, it just makes it makes a noise that to me doesn't add anything to the song, except for like a clap or a tambourine. And <laughs> I guess I guess my rhythm games I tend to like like Guitar Freaks or something or a Guitar Hero in the mm-hmm. U.S. Right, where you you're actually playing the music. You're not like just contributing these adding oh, cat meows. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or dog barks, which I haven't played with the dog barks yet, but I'm gonna. <laughs> so, yeah, and then I guess as far as game types go, there's just kind of the standard game mode in here. And then, uh, you know, it's got some, like, a daily play where you play a random song to get extra points. And uh, my list play where you can line up a number of songs to play in a row. Um there's items that get unlocked with points, like costumes for the uh, for the main character, and UI skins that you'll never use, and <laughs> <laughs> various various stuff like that. So, I guess uh, I guess what it boils down to is I I enjoyed the game, and it had some fun variety. It was an entertaining time sink, but I want Guitaru Man Two. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever played that, uh... but. Uh, I love the soundtrack in that. I love the gameplay in that. And it kind of this game kind of reminded me of it in the way that the paths looked, but it's just not 
it's not the same. But it was still fun, so I'm giving it four out of five tambourine hits. Okay, all right. It's, it's a pretty good, I think it's worth playing. But, uh, and that's yeah. uh, PS Vita? Is it only PS it Vita? or? I believe it's only PS Vita. Okay. Um, and it's only in <laughs> Japanese, so I guess... <laughs> <laughs> that might be that might set the bar for who wants to actually play it <laughs> alright right, well let's uh, let's figure out what we've added to the pile recently so Doom for me so I've heard a lot of really good things about Doom uh, the, it's the new one that just came out and uh, Best Buy had a sale on it and then I got the Gamers Club discount on top of that. And then I had like a whole bunch of credits from buying Overwatch. So I got it for like 12 <laughs> bucks. So oh, nice. I will take that. I haven't played it at all yet. So, uh, but all my friends who have played it, all the reviews seem really, really good for it. Um, our friend Seth indicated that uh, ID is going to be taking over the um, multiplayer because mm-hmm. they had yeah. sectioned that out to a third party to do, and apparently they did it really badly. It, I played the beta, and mm-hmm. the multiplayer was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It was really bad. Yeah, apparently they, they're they taking that back on, so hopefully that will uh, that will be better, because what's Doom without a really good multiplayer? It's like... Well, I've heard that, I mean, the single player is supposed to be phenomenal, so yeah. it's like... It sucks when they bomb the multiplayer. Which I mean, what's the last game they released? Was it uh, was it a Quake? No, I don't remember what game they released. But it must have multiplayer, right? It's an right. software thing. Yeah, as so. I I've, as I recall, Doom Three's multiplayer was not that great either. Oh, so. I don't even. I guess I've never played it. <laughs> yeah, I played it once, and I was like, yeah, that's that's I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh all right, all right, Pete. I'm gonna kick back, relax. Uh, tell us all the things you've added to the pu- to the pile. Yeah, right. Start your like Benny Hill music mm-hmm. or something here. We're gonna <laughs> speed it up. Um, so the other day, uh, I don't know if you guys saw Ar- Arma, the uh, the first person shooter like hardcore military sim thing. Mm-hmm. They had like every Arma game on sale for twenty two bucks as a package. <laughs> So, so now I have, I think, every Arma game ever. <laughs> Jeez. I bought, uh, yeah, I've been doing real good not buying stuff. And then, I don't know what happened. I blacked out. And now I own, like, Legendary, Resident Evil Zero, a game called A Story About My Uncle, which looks intriguing and sounds disturbing. But, <laughs> but it's not. It just sounds disturbing. Um, and uh, had a bunch of... Oh no! <laughs> a bunch of Japanese visual novels, um, and I also realized the other day that I'm subscribed to the monthly Humble Bundle, and I haven't looked at that for about three months. So I don't know what games I have there, but a bunch of them are probably duplicates. And maybe we should give away codes on the show at some <laughs> point for like a, I don't know, a contest. Um, so yeah, there we go. All right, <laughs> that's what I've had recently. I'll cut yakety sack short then. There we go. <laughs> There's probably more coming, like Doom and Mirror's uh, Edge Catalyst. <laughs> yes, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I'm looking forward to that when that comes out. So, uh, All right, well, Totem, what have you added to the pile recently? All right, so recently I picked up the uh, South Park, The Sick of Truth, yes. uh, because I knew the, the sequel <laughs> is coming out because that was announced at E3, uh, mm-hmm. the, the Fractured But Whole. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of South Park, so I'm really looking forward to seeing all the different Easter eggs they have. And I've heard, like, nothing but good things about it. I've heard some some okayish things about the combat system, but yeah. I just can't wait to, to test that out because I'm sure it's going to be hilarious. Other than that, though, um, obviously we had uh, gone home for PS4 for uh, the games with the, the, uh, the PSN PS Plus. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was going to play that because that's been on my radar for a while now, and I just never got around to it. So now I get to play it for free, so no complaints here. <laughs> but um, other than that, Doom has been another game I've been looking at. I know it's on sale right now during the uh, the summer sale for Steam. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still kind of on the fence about it because uh, Doom was like the first FPS game that I played. Same with uh, Wolfenstein 3D. That's what pretty much brought me into the genre for FPS games. But I, I just don't know how you feel about the new Doom. Like, it looks 
I think they got like the pacing right, but like just the multiplayer aspect of the the beta just completely turned me off from wanting to play yeah, it. Just, so I don't know. Just re- remember that the multiplayer was built by a completely it's different completely studio. Separate. I know. Yeah. So maybe what I should do is maybe I should uh, watch a couple like playthroughs for a little bit just to get a general feel for the the pacing and to see if it is like an arena type shooter like it should be. But like my my biggest issue with it, I just feel like the the gore attacks or like the quick melee or whatever the heck they call it. I don't know. The glory kills. Glory kills. Yeah. Yeah. Just are going to add too much uh, repetitiveness and be like your go to for getting some of the big bads out of the way. Right. Yeah. Um, Well, going back to South Park Stick of Truth, I did a review on that a few podcasts ago and the combat system, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be your only downside to that, and it's fun for the first like half of the game, and then it you become way too powerful, and you just one shot. You're using super abilities right off the bat and ending combat really quick, <laughs> so that's no good. But the actual like story and how they do the presentation of the story is utterly fantastic. So if you're a fan of South Park, you're gonna love this game. All right, good to know. All right. So, uh, before we go on, let's uh, talk some Overwatch. Uh, I would be remiss <laughs> to have you on the podcast and not talk Overwatch. I Mr. mean, Heroes I, Man- I'm only wearing my, my, my jacket. <laughs> right. Heroes <laughs> Never Die podcast, yeah. <laughs> so, you have a tournament coming up this Saturday, right? Yes, this Saturday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we have an eight-team tournament. Well... That's assuming everyone shows up. Right. But um, I am shoutcasting it along with Melkery on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash drunk, And it is going to be uh, a best of three series until we get to the finals, which are going to be best of five. But I, I'm just looking forward to it. I know a lot of teams have been putting in a lot of time to get scrims in. Some of them have actually been playing one another. Others, you know, might just hop in quick play. But, you know, I'm just really anxious. I hope my... Uh, my client issues don't decide to uh, resurface and randomly kick me to the login like it did the other night. Oh, that'd be bad. Has that been happening a lot or just It's once? a known issue that has plagued a lot of players, it looks like, uh, oh. just based on forum responses, but really no blue posts about it other than, oh yeah, just flush your DNS. Well, I did that uh, quite a few times already. It does not really help. <laughs> oh jeez! Just constantly, <laughs> constantly flush the DNS. Yeah. Yeah, because there, there's times where I can like get kicked to log in like three or four times in one game alone, and then it won't happen the rest of the night. It's just really wow. random and weird. It's yeah, wild. I had that happen the first couple nights, but after that, I have not had that issue at all. It did. Okay, I take that back. It did happen once a few days ago, just once. So, hmm. hopefully, the, yeah, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen during while you're casting the game otherwise that'll be really annoying <laughs> yeah i might have to have i might have to have malkyrie set up the lobby just because of that just in case uh it goes down to my end right yeah make sure I he's not experiencing we'll that either <laughs> so we'll figure it out but yeah i mean last night um after i finished uh recording overplayed i hopped on and i had a game on attack on king's row with farah and I uploaded this whole match because it was that good for me. I had 20,000 damage that game and 76 direct rocket hits for like a 31% <laughs> uh, for rockets fired. And then I had this awesome, I had an awesome uh, like flank barrage over by the hotel area. Because mm-hmm. I was dealing with a Hanzo that was trying to like sneak behind and get higher up. So I dealt with him, turned around the corner, and had a really nice 3k barrage on a point to get the, the first point on King's Row. But... Just everything I did that game was just hidden on all cylinders, and I kept flinking them. They had no answer, and it was just probably something that I can never be able to repeat just on a performance <laughs> standard. Yeah, yeah I That's had why a, it's on video. <laughs> yeah, I had a really good Pharaoh game just today when I was playing with Monkey-O, and uh, unfortunately we still lost, even though it's like I was just utterly destroying everything. But I was going against two, um, two divas, and so every time I went to hit my ult, it was useless because yep, one of them matrix. would always defense matrix. So uh, I was mm. playing as uh, I was playing as Diva the other day, 
uh, during our practice. And I ended up just really ticking off this Pharah because I would do that every time she would hit it. I would ult and like, or I would, uh, hit my defense matrix and just fly up right next to her. (laughs) (laughs) So she couldn't do anything. She's like, come on. Uh, it was good times. That's a really fun game. I I love like the counter and being able to, to change midstream and take out people. It's yeah. It's good, good game. Pete, we need to get you playing this more. <laughs> well, I've, I've played six whole games. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to playing some more with you guys. I just, uh, yeah, now yeah. things have settled down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the the crazy stuff I've been seeing, like the the Overwatch Reddit has just been super active. And mm-hmm. you just see all sorts of crazy like compositions and weird things that they they pull off like i saw today a uh four zarya and two lucio uh turret <laughs> buster what? on hanamura yeah, i saw that one too it was like a minute 40 or yeah. something around there but they just breeze through them so quickly what yeah wow. it's, it's it's great for handling like hanamura specifically because it's short run to each each point but they usually tend to put defense puts a ton of turrets and Zarya can just utterly destroy them, especially with four of them, if they just run in really, really fast. And so they had no idea how to counter that. And four Zarya's is really hard to counter. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what happens in the tournament and whether we see any of those cheese type situations. Um, oh, me. <laughs> oh, That's oh, really easy to counter, though. Yeah. yeah. Just go mass Fara. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, it's uh we've that's been our our bane and so any team that's watching here's here's what you do to beat us I guess <laughs> is anytime that they pull some cheese mechanic cuz we're trying to be all like all right let's make a good composition be a nice balance let's do this and then it's like oh like six bastions okay uh we'll just die that's cool we'll we'll just fall <laughs> over that's fine so <laughs> it's a, it, you have to cheese us to beat us so it's, see what we can do (laughs) ah good times good times i'm really looking forward to um to participating hope we can do well i saw solar flare started a team yes he did like that had been in the works forever and i was like trying to get like an update from him like solar like are you gonna be in because he's like oh well we have you know a couple people that are tentative so you know i don't know yet and then i saw him register uh, i think it was either yesterday or the day before so Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking to him because we needed to, since we lost someone due to a real life thing that came up, I was seeing if he would come in as an alt. um, And he's like, I'm not sure. I'm trying to put together a team, but I can't, I don't know. I'll let you know. And then I see it pop up on the, on the thing. So I'm like, okay, you're off our discord. No more looking at our secrets. (laughs) (laughs) Bye bye. (laughs) Uh, You can't have a spy in your house. I mean, yes, we had, we did have a spy. He knows all of our secrets. We are doomed. Uh, so how many teams are in the tournament? I guess uh, I didn't right catch now, that. we have eight. Uh, this is basically a community tournament that I'm doing alongside our Warcraft Guild to convert to raid. But, uh, you know, a lot of my, my podcast buddies from the community have been helping, uh, just trying to spread the word about it. So I'm hoping for a pretty decent turnout in terms of viewership. But, yeah, so far we have eight teams, so... Hopefully we don't have any issues with uh, people not showing. Uh, We do have a couple alternates on each team, so that should uh, help alleviate that problem just a little bit. So yeah, there's one team that only has five, and one team that only has one. So we'll see what happens there. But well, the team that has five is from the League of Overwatchers Discord, and I know that they were looking at maybe swapping a few people from Activate and Tenacious Divas. So I don't know if they just haven't updated their team on the challenge page or what, but oh, okay. I would expect them to be full come uh, Saturday. Okay, fantastic. It'd be good to have at least you know at least eight teams, hopefully, uh, or at least seven teams, hopefully eight. We'll see what that German team does. Klobust. Yeah. German team. Yeah, Uh-oh. there's a, one one guy <laughs> yeah, registered a German team. Yeah, I don't know if it was just like no a random sign up. From like out of the blue or what? Or yeah. just trolling me? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. We'll find out on Saturday. Please. All right, guys, uh, get your wallets and put it in the safe because here we go. Preparing to dispense product. Steam, don't do it. Your business is appreciated. <laughs> it's too late. 
It already <sighs> happens. Critical hit. All right, well, well, we'll save that towards the end. Let's go over the other great deals out there. If you're looking for an Xbox One, now is the time to do it. Everyone seems to be dumping their stock because the Xbox One S is um, real, and it's going to be coming out soon. So they're giving really good deals out on that so um you can look around i know groupon had one uh and there's a few i think even microsoft themselves is having a good sale on it so yeah check that out if you're looking for an xbox one uh halo 5 is actually dropping a significant patch uh very soon with um they're bringing firefight back so that's uh been something that's been hotly wanted since uh it came out in odst and was not there in halo 5 so keep that in mind all right if uh speaking of xbox one if you've got games with gold they've got uh, f- the june games are up goat simulator fantastic game <laughs> and, quality game yes quality game and yeah, the my crew. plays that all the time and i'm like what the heck are you even playing i have no idea what is happening <laughs> and i'm just playing that game <laughs> and, did i give that to everybody I'm yes trying to you remember. did yes all you right, did yeah <laughs> good (laughs) Uh, i haven't played the mmo version but they're also doing like a space one like a space combat goat simulator i don't (laughs) what the hell i love it uh the crew is also free on xbox one um and then the xbox 360 games which are backwards compatible so if you have a one you can pick these up as well uh super meat boy fantastic really hard game uh and then xcom is also available And that one is uh, critically acclaimed. It's a good one to pick up. And then, let's see, if you have a PS Plus membership on the PS4, you can get NBA 2K16, I guess for the NBA Finals. And then (laughs) Gone Home Console Edition, which is what uh, Totem Lee was talking about. I will probably pick this up. It doesn't seem like it's totally in my wheelhouse, not a game I usually play, but hey, it's free. Might as well add it to the pile, I guess. The price is right to <laughs> yes. increase your shame. Yep. Uh, for the PS3, you can get Echo Chrome and Siren Blood Curse, episodes 1 through 12. Um, don't know anything about either of these games. Siren, I think oh, yeah. if this is the uh, if this is the one I'm thinking, I have not actually looked this up, but they had it on PS2. I actually have a PS2 game. Um, it was sort of a weird horror series that focused on uh like tapping in you saw things from the enemy's viewpoints in those and then you had to kind of dodge them based on nothing more than being able to see what they saw oh interesting so i'm actually kind of excited for this i didn't realize that was on there <laughs> yeah. so you've got a few days left to, to pick that up uh let's see god of war chains of olympus and little deviance is available for the ps vita so yeah, PS Plus always a good deal. Uh, always uh, go out there. And I know that there's, um, was it? I know I saw there was a deal out there for forty dollars for one year of PS Plus right now. I'd have to look that up. But both mm-hmm. Xbox uh, Live and PS Plus is on sale somewhere usually. Um, so never pay never pay full price for those. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, and the humble bundle. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is now 25 yes. years old. <laughs> oh, I heard that today. Yes. <laughs> that actually surprised me. I thought he would be older than that. I thought he was... Uh, <laughs> I thought you were older, Sonic. Yeah, I thought he was in the... I thought that was in the 80s, but it didn't come out until 91, apparently. So, But yes. uh, good old Sonic the Hedgehog is, uh, has, is part of the humble bundle for a dollar or more you can get the original uh sonic adventure dx sonic 3d blast and sonic cd with good old mecha sonic <laughs> <laughs> if you pay more than the average which is when i took the screenshot it was about nine dollars and 59 cents uh you can get sonic the hedgehog 4 episode 1 uh sonic and sega all-stars racing sonic 2 sonic adventure 2 uh and then for ten dollars or more which you might as well if you're paying nine fifty nine, pay another forty one cents. Get Sonic Lost World, Sonic Generations, Sonic the Hedgehog Four Episode Two, and Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed. You could probably do without that one, but might as well. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> if you pay $35 or more, you can get the exclusive Sonic 25th Anniversary t-shirt. Oh my god, it covers me up with Sonic. Yes. I mean, it's pretty cool. I don't know if it's worth, you know, the extra $25. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it goes to edition. a good cause. Remember that... Uh, yeah, we, we only printed like 100 T's. Get it now. Right. <laughs> yeah, remember that anything you, you donate to the Humble Bundle, you can you can divvy out to the developer or to charity. Um, so you can donate $35 a charity and get a really cool t-shirt and a ton of Sonic games varying in quality. (laughs) I wonder how much you'd have to, would you have to like stack another computer on top of yours to play Sonic and knuckles? Or is that, uh, (laughs) all one game? Oh man. Yeah. I don't know if, if, cause all these are steam keys. I don't know if they have like a Sonic and knuckles at all. I'm not, I'm not seeing that on there. I'm a little disappointed. Right. (laughs) Oh man, that was a good time. Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Two was the first Sonic game I played, and that was um, that was thrilling. I didn't own a own a Genesis, but I had a friend who had one, so I'd go over there and play it a lot. So, good times. <laughs> That's how it always starts. Right, and then it's I remember I I bought the Dreamcast specifically for Sonic Adventure because that looked like it was the <laughs> coolest game ever. Uh yes. Yeah. yeah, I never had a Dreamcast. I did have the uh, the Sega Saturn, which was not the best buy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I actually, I'm pretty it, happy it with Lights, my Saturn. which was phenomenal. But other than that, there really wasn't anything out for it. Right, yeah. The what, Dreamcast what? was... <laughs> I'll, I'll let you two fight that one out. Before it... <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this outside. <laughs> well, you have to remember, like, I was growing up during this era, too. So my, my standards for gaming were, were pretty low at the time. Pretty sure he's calling us old here. <laughs> I, I so. mean, it's not that old, but I mean, like for Sonic, like going back to Sonic, like that came out in the 90s. I was like four or five at the time. So when these came out, like those were really like my first game experience other than like um, Mario 3. That's messed up. I know. <laughs> you made us feel super old just now. <laughs> Even though it's only like five years, but still. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> I was going to go somewhere with that. Nope. <laughs> Got nothing. Uh, oh, moving on. <laughs> red alert. Red alert. Hide the wallet. Steam Summer HTTP Error 503 sale has begun. <laughs> uh, my favorite error. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it did me a huge favor this morning. Yeah, it, really it stops you from <laughs> stops you from yourself from buying anything. <laughs> yeah, the first day of the summer, of the Steam sales are always terrible and then it then it catches up and you're okay. It seems to, I seem to be able to browse stuff pretty quickly now. So it's not too bad, but yeah, when it first started, it was just like five Oh three everywhere. <sighs> but steam summer picnic sale is going on until July 4th at 10 AM Pacific time. So note that this is a departure from previous steam sales, except for the last winter sale. They've changed it where it used to be. The nomenclature was that you waited until hmm. the last day to make sure that none of the flash sales was a better deal than what you saw now. They've changed it where any deal that is out there is guaranteed to be the lowest price you're going to see during the sale. So if you see something you want at a price you like, get it. It's not going to be lower. So you, uh, I'm kind of happy with that. Actually, right. It was sort of obnoxious. System. Yeah. It was obnoxious having to check like every six hours to see if the game you wanted was going to be on sale. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so instead of doing like the, like, checking every six hours, check your flash flash sales, vote for it to get your cards. What they're doing now is they give you a queue of recommended games. You know, algorithm determines games that they think you'll like. And you just go through the queue. And once you go through the queue and you either add it to your wish list or you say, I'm not interested or just skip to the next one. You go through all that, you'll get a card. And you can do that three times a day. And you'll get your trading <laughs> cards to do the, all the meta game stuff that you do with the with the badges. Nice. I had not. Uh, I didn't realize they changed things up. Yeah, they so. changed it up in the winter sale, which is uh, which is good. I think this is this is much better. It's not quite as like exciting where you like wake up and it's like, oh, it's six a.m. Let's take a look at what we got. <laughs> but every day you'll right. every day at noon you'll see some new stuff out there and uh, noon central, ten a.m. Pacific. Yeah. Um, Let's see what new stuff is out there. Get some good deals. Uh, today's deals are they've got a whole bunch of Sonic stuff, Call of Duty. Um, missed some of the other stuff. It's nothing I was like too terribly interested in. But 
It's because I probably own half of it already. That's, yeah, I know, yeah, I know Doom is marked down. Yeah, good Doom amount. is like marked down right bucks. now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Definitely got to buy that now. Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so keep an eye out there. You can go to Steam. Um, just open up your Steam client. I'm sure you all have it. <laughs> it's probably open right now. You're already spending. You're already you buying stuff. Stop. Stop <laughs> buying stuff, guys. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, what's coming up next for you guys, Pete? What are you now that you finished IAVT? What's next? <laughs> Besides playing with the well, puppy so, noises. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm basically I'm just gonna set that up next to my bed with one of those drinking birds that that hits it constantly. It's just gonna make barking <laughs> noises all through the night. That's how I'm gonna get through life from now on. Um, <laughs> I don't know what game's coming next, but I've uh, I haven't been doing very great on. Uh, on playing stuff lately, so I think I'm going to try and do stuff regularly, stream on uh, Wednesday nights starting at 7 p.m. Pacific time with, uh, I think I'm probably going to call it Whatever Wednesday. It'll be uh, <laughs> kind of a random game or, uh, uh, yeah, whatever yeah, happens to be good at the time. So. Show up at, uh, at that time and help guide the decision process, make him play the most terrible <laughs> game. That's right possible yes please help no or you can quote unquote help and, right yeah <laughs> and play alone in the dark pete okay play aliens criminal marines with one hand oh, no, <laughs> i still have to finish that <laughs> not enough booze in the world uh, well totem what's going to be the first game you're going to conquer in your pile um well i'm actually doing a pair of games because they do go hand in hand i'm doing wolfenstein the new order just because i've heard nothing but good things about it and then i'm also going to do uh the expansion for that which was i believe the new blood if i'm not mistaken okay so that's next up for me i'm hoping uh that the hype that everyone's kind of built around it lives up to uh to that because from what i've heard i've heard nothing but good things and it seems to be like very very nostalgic and true to its roots, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, the like arena shooter type thing they had a while back, the Wolfenstein one, that was actually pretty fun. I played that a lot. Um, I forget what that was called, but yes, that was fun. Uh, for me, Papers, Please, that's what I've been playing, <laughs> and I don't get it. Like, Do you feel the crushing, overwhelming depression of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah being that guy yeah i don't understand like there's so much critical acclaim for this game yet it's all it is is frustration and boringness i don't get it it's <laughs> like you look at papers you play uh, someone showed up in the chat room and said what the hell is this tsa simulator what's going on <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah, yeah it's so those of you who don't know you play it's there's a general kind of storyline that kind of goes through you have some interesting events and decisions that you make over the course of the the month that you play as a paper pusher essentially at a border patrol and they hand you documents and you review the documents to make sure they may meet all the rules aren't forged aren't counterfeit there's a lot of counterfeiters in that country man <laughs> <laughs> and you have to find well, discrepancies and you know, deny and allow in order to get money to pay for keeping your family alive. And apparently I'm terrible at that because all that's left is my mother-in-law and I'm tempted to just let her die. So <laughs> Died of dysentery. Right. Yeah, she was, you mean she wasn't like the first one? No, she wasn't the first one. Like the, my wife's uh, son and uncle all died on the same night, even though it said, it's like they're all sick, they need medicine. I was like, okay. So I paid for the medicine and they all died anyways. <laughs> and i'm like okay game thanks i guess uh so there's a couple of little story tidbits that make it seem like it, there might be something to it but i actually when i just played it i missed one of the the things i realized after i denied him I'm like oh sh that was the guy i needed to let through and so i screwed that up so now i don't even get the interesting story tidbit <laughs> <sighs> so yay yeah, I'll probably... It's, it's I'll, sort of... Go ahead. Hmm? Oh, I was just going to say, it's just sort of an interesting commentary game, and it is... You didn't mention, but they, they keep heaping more rules on you every yes, day, right? every it's day not it's just a like, new rule, and yeah. Yeah, so it's like, oh, today you need a ticket along with this 
stamp and, and they only, only give from one you of these like, countries. They only give you enough room to put like one document and yet there's like <laughs> they give you eighty documents and you're like, Okay, now I have to pull up the rule book and like if you have to deny them you have to say why and so you have to find the discrepancy and yeah, it's mm-hmm. duh. <laughs> I'm going to see it through to fruition. I'm going to get beat it one time. Apparently, there's a ton of different endings for it, but I'll just YouTube those. I don't care enough to to go through it. I'll just move on to the next next game on the pile. So there's that. Give up? Or... <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to give up on it. I'll get one one ending. It'll probably be a terrible one, but I'll get one. <sighs> All right. Yes. It's better than none. Right. Okay. Well. If you'd like to game with us, guys, you can find links to all of our different gaming profiles and more in the show notes of each episode at poshame.com. The world needs more heroes. Join me in Overwatch as I procrastinate getting through my pile. My battle tag is chai t pound 1806 And my other podcast, Monk Meditation, about World of Warcraft and the Monk class, will be returning next month as we gear up for the upcoming expansion, Legion. All right, Pete, got any shout-outs? Well, I guess if you want to play with me on Battle.net for some reason, you're a fool. But uh, my tag is, I believe, DZFO, hashtag 1224. Yes, and hashtag Brothers you can, Unite. You can experience, yeah, you can experience the joy of playing with me. No, it's not <laughs> good. Don't do it. Play with one of these guys. All right, Totem. Ah, uh, well, you can escort the payload with me in Overwatch at Tunnelly Drunk, pound 1819, and don't forget that heroes never die. Yes. So where can they uh, where can they find heroes never die? All right, so you can find me on Twitter uh, for the podcast at HND Overwatch. Uh, we also have a Discord server at bit.ly slash HND Overwatch. But, you know, we're also up on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Fantastic. All right. To get in contact with the show, email us at show at poshame.com. Pete, how can everyone best reach us? Well, you can follow us on Twitter. Rob is at wowmonk. Pete is at fighting viper. And our guest is at totemly drunk CTR. Is that right? Yep. Yes, that is correct. I, I updated it on the fly. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. And then our show is at PO Shame. So. All right. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Conquer the pile. Don't quit. We'll be back in a couple weeks with more games to add to your pile. Until then, don't get smothered by your pile of shame. Night, everybody. See ya. Good night. (gasps) I love the 20. Okay.